بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Every Friday before the khutbah we usually take questions so if we have any questions I prefer taking them from the audience otherwise I get questions and I have a list of them so I can go through them but if we have any questions before the khutbah begins inshallah this is the opportunity I'll open up the floor so if there are any specific questions, if not, uh, yes, tawadda. I'm sorry? Ah, uh, duha. Uh, so salat al-duha is a general term that applies to ishraq. Ishraq is when the sun clears the horizon. So if, if this is the horizon, this is fajr. So if this is the sun and the sun is coming up, what time is fajr? Do you guys know? 5.30. Right, there's a difference of opinion, right? <laughs> There's a difference of opinion based on the angle from the earth. So you have scholars who will say 18 degrees, you'll have scholars who will say 13 degrees, you'll have scholars who will say 15 degrees. But basically the Fajr time is when the light clears the horizon. So you have the first type of light which is called Fajr al-Kadib and this is when the, the light comes straight up. So when the light comes straight up, this is Fajr al-Kadib and this is where you'll hear the first of that. A Fajr al-Sadiq is when the light is actually across the horizon. That, that is the Fajr time. That's actual Fajr time when you have the visible light. When that comes in, then here, when does the Fajr time end? Right here, right? So as soon as the sun starts clearing the horizon, this is, this is the time where you have the Fajr time ends. It's over because this is sunrise. And then the sunrise, it is not permissible to pray at this time until the sun completely clears the horizon, right? So when the sun completely clears the horizon, when it's like this, this is what we call Ishraq. Ishraq is just a specific time for when we make the prayer in the masjid, right? So when we talk about Salat al-Ishraq, Ishraq is when the sun has completely cleared the horizon and the people make those two rakah in the masjid. This is actually the beginning of Duha time, right? This is the beginning of Duha time. Duha time continues until the sun reaches its peak, right? So from here to here is the Duha time. Is that clear? After the sun moves from this zenith, this is now what? This is Duhar, right? So from, from here to here is Duha and here is Duhar. Yeah, and there's like a very small gap between that, which is also considered the, uh, the Zawad. Uh, the second question that, that I've received, if there are any other questions, otherwise, yes, it's followed. I think that every Friday people come here. Okay, yeah. So one, one of the purposes of Salat al-Jum'ah is a jama, right? <laughs> it's to actually gather together and to meet and to learn about our brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, the Muslim community has gotten so large um, that it's difficult now to actually have a social time after the prayer. Here at Dar al-Hijjah, we have three prayers. <laughs> and, and because we have three prayers, the problem is between the end of one prayer and the beginning of the next one, what is the priority? Getting people out, right? <laughs> like getting, getting people out of the masjid so that we have room to bring in new people. But one of the purposes of the Jummah is actually to, to hear what is the problems and the issues that our brothers and sisters are facing. So what I can recommend and what I do encourage everyone to do after the Salah, maybe just give salam to the brother next to you, introduce yourself. Uh, and this is sometimes can be very difficult. Right? It's very challenging because the person next to us is a complete stranger. Uh, many times we don't know who that person is. And sometimes they might take it as awkward, like, okay, what do you want from me? You know, and, but we, we should try to remove that culture. We should try to remove that attitude. Um, because, like I said, usually, it, and it's, it's really unfortunate, when we introduce ourselves to a stranger, it's usually because we want something, right? It's usually because we want something from them. But if we start removing that culture where we actually give salam, say, hey, my name is so-and-so, you know, what do you do? And that's it. You just make small talk. It's like, do you, do you need something? No, I just wanted to introduce myself. And, you know, so I think that's a healthy way of, of moving that forward. Jazakallah khair for the suggestion. What is the Zawal time when we do so we stop the Salah? Uh, the Zawal time is basically as soon as the sun reaches its zenith, when it is at its high point, this is the time where we can't pray. That's the only time. And this is called Zawal. Why? Because Yazad, yani it's, it, it moves now. Yeah. So at the, at the height we can't pray and it's just a few minutes. Like you're, you're talking about like maybe less than, less than five minutes from the time. It re, when it comes here, we can't pray. And as soon as it moves here, this is the, this is the long time. Any other questions? So one question I get commonly and especially mostly from the youth is about music. 
you know, is music permissible? Uh, there is a difference of opinion, and this is something that, that needs to be understood. The difference of opinion, it comes from the hadith, right? So this hadith in the Buk uh, Bukhari, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيَشْرِبَنَّ النَّاسَ مِنْ أُمَّةِ الْخَمَرِ يُسَمُّونَهَا بِغَيْرِ إِسْمِهَا يُعَزَّفْ عَلَى رُؤَسَائِهِمْ بِالْمَعَازِفْ وَالْمُغَيَّاتْ يَخْسِفُ اللَّهُ بِهِمْ الْأَرْضِ وَيَجْعَلْ مِنْهُمْ الْقِرْدَةِ وَالْخَنَازِيَةِ That there will be a people from my ummah that will drink alcohol and name it other than that. They play musical instruments and listen to female singers. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them and turn them into monkeys and swine. So what's really interesting about this hadith is Imam Bukhari himself, how does he use this hadith? Does anyone know? He used it for a nahi an shurb al khamar. So he doesn't use this hadith specifically to show the prohibition of listening to music. He uses this hadith specifically to show the impermissibility of drinking alcohol. And, and that's something important to keep in mind. Even this hadith, this is, hadith is called something called Mu'allaq. So Imam Bukhari, if there is a hadith that is according to his standard, he brings the entire chain. He'll bring the entire chain of narration from him to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith is Mu'allaq. He doesn't bring the entire chain. And every time Imam Bukhari brings a hadith that is not in its entirety, if he just brings saying qala and he begins in the hadith like this and it's not in its in entirety, it is not up to Imam Bukhari's standard. So there are two problems here, there are two issues here. Number one, the hadith isn't according to his standard. And number two, the way he uses the hadith himself is not to show the prohibition of music. Because music is something that is a very broad term, it is a very general term. From music we have vocals, and from music we have musical instruments. Over here, this hadith, there's another hadith that actually gives a little bit more context to it, which is that the problem isn't the musical instruments here. The problem is what? Drinking alcohol. So these people, they drink alcohol, and it is very common to, to drink in those gatherings. And this is where it becomes an issue, and this is where it becomes a problem. Because of the association, not because of the instruments in and of themselves. You even have uh, in one of the taf tafsir, Imam al-Tabari, uh, ta he brings in his tafsir when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in Surah Al-Jum'ah, uh, should I? وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا هَا إِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةٍ أَوْ لَهْوَنٍ هَا إِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةٍ أَوْ so over here, Imam al-Tabari himself mentions, he says that the, the companions were actually listening to music, meaning that they were, they were listening to Aghani, they were listening to music, and the, the, the khutbah was going on, and they left the Prophet ﷺ standing. So the problem, again, wasn't the fact that they were doing those things, the problem is that they were leaving the Jum'ah, right, that they were leaving the Jum'ah. So if we look in both of these situations, there are these issues that stand. You have a spectrum of opinions amongst the madahib. The most strict of them, the Hanabira, they say that the only instrument that is actually allowed is the tabak, right? Is the is the duf. And the the Malikiyah, they are the most vast in this, where they allow all different kinds of musical instruments. And the reason I mention this, it's very important for us to keep in mind that when we have issues that there isn't agree, agreement upon, when we talk about those things that are muharram. So if, for example, if I say lying, is there a difference of opinion on lying? No. There's no difference of opinion on riba and backbiting. There's no difference of opinion on tail carrying. There's no difference of opinion on any of these things. But when it comes to issues like music, you have people who are going to be more conservative, who are going to say it's haram. Even men singing, they will say it's haram. And that's fine. And you'll have scholars who say that. And then you have other scholars who say it is permissible. All of them agree on a few things. As long as that music, as long as that singing doesn't call to sin, as long as that music isn't fahish, right? It isn't evil. Then all of these things are would be like all of them agree that this is wrong. Now, how that's expressed, it depends on the madhab that you follow, and it depends on the scholars that you listen to. But just as a general ruling, you know, if if there are musical instruments in there, there will be scholars who allow it, and if there are musical instruments in there, there are scholars who will disallow it. It's important for us to keep these things in mind. And the reason I started with the mention of the hadith because this is the strongest proof. There is no stronger proof than this. There are no clear verses. All of the verses, you can actually, um, you can use them as uh, allegories and you can say, no, that's not actually what's intended or there's a specific purpose behind them. The clearest proof that anyone has in making this impermissible is this hadith in Bukhari. And even this hadith, we have shown that it's very possible that, that it is not what's intended. It's not the prohibition that's intended that's there. Wallahu alam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa khalqa nabina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar.
Yeah. 